Hello, I am Luxbrush. And I'm Member. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 24, Equestria Games. Okay, is it just me, or is this a filler episode where they didn't need to have a filler episode, and it's all about Spike when it doesn't feel like it should be? It's like this episode wasn't even needed, but it's the conclusion of the Equestria Games arc. Shouldn't there be more to it? This almost feels like it's a side story that would have happened during the actual arc of the Equestria Games. You know, when we're actually enjoying the rest of the Equestria Games. But they focus on the side story, and I'm left wondering, why does this even exist? My first question was, why is the episode even called Equestria Games? When it should be called It's All About Spike for No Reason. <laughs> I mean, the episode even starts out promising because it has Rainbow Dash. So I'm thinking, oh, this episode's going to be about Rainbow Dash. Cool. That, that's a good point because, you know, Rainbow is part of the team that we don't think will, you know, win. Maybe at all because they all rely on the speed of Rainbow Dash, which is a pretty good thing to rely on. But still? So I'm like, oh, this is cool. Oh, it's Spike. The CMC. That's cool. That's cool. And then we get to the Crystal Empire. And Spike is wixed away, and that's the moment the episode starts to take a dive. <laughs> yes, I mean, it's very nice that all the crystal ponies are grateful to him. And, I mean, that's even understandable. He was very helpful in the whole, yay, we stopped Sombra and saved the Crystal Empire and all the crystal ponies. Yeah, I mean, the entire time I'm going, really? 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 <laughs> I mean, throughout the episode, I go, I went really a lot. I was like... Oh my god, really? Or, that's not needed, why is that? I mean, uh, that's it! it, it uh, uh. <laughs> that's not saying there isn't good parts to this episode. There's lots of little funny moments, or a lot of good moments from the actors. Like, there's that great moment where Spike actually goes, Hello, beautiful, and he does it in this really kind of awesome voice. Yeah. And of course we get to see Cadence again, but she's not really doing much in this episode other than, I'm exposition! Thank you, Pink Princess. Move along. Move along. <laughs> May as well start back at the beginning. Very disappointing that Rainbow Dash is like, yeah, well, we probably won't win, so everybody else go for lots of medals because we probably won't win. That is such a defeatist attitude. Rainbow Dash is beyond confident. Now, if she wasn't confident in her ability to carry her whole team? Why did she even pull Bulk Biceps and Fluttershy to make a team? I'm sure somewhere there had to be a solo Pegasus event, even if it wasn't a flying event. She could have done, been an Ice Archer, you know, just to be able to participate in the Equestria Games. Like I said before, at the beginning here, it was really nice, and the episode could have been focused around of, even if you don't win gold or something, you can still be awesome about winning. Even, or awesome about losing, because that seemed like a good theme, but then they never used it at all. Yeah, they really didn't utilize that, because Scootaloo's comment about it being everyone's chance to be awesome was great. Because the real spirit of the games and the competition should be to go out there and do the best that you can. And that's a great theme to go with. And we really could have spent the whole episode on that. You know, focusing on spending more time on the medal count, more time on Rainbow Dash's event and, you know, her coping with the fact that she didn't come in first. I mean, she's Rainbow Dash. She wins. And speaking of the medal count, I think it's actually off. I'm pretty sure they're tied with Cloudsdale. Unless they didn't count that event because it was interrupted by a giant ice cloud. It also depends on how you're calculating the medal count. Are you calculating total medals overall or are you calculating by metal value. Yeah, that's what I was thinking and trying to figure out if Pinkie Pie was counting total medals or she was counting total medals that are worth something. <laughs> Not that medals aren't worth anything, it's just, I say, lower medals aren't worth anything. <laughs> no, and I wish that we had spent some more time on that interaction because it wasn't just about the rivalry between the Cloudsdale team and the Ponyville team. We had, a, we had at least one Griffin team, because we had a Griffin team place bronze. I would have liked to have seen more of the Griffins and more interaction. They had some very different character designs. Yeah, and this episode's full of missed opportunities. <laughs> and that was one of them. It seems kind of unfair, you know, we didn't see most of the race, but okay, the Wonderbolts won, Rainbow Dash's team was next. 
So the Griffins, the only non-pony team, were third place. Were they even in the running? We don't know, because we didn't see most of the race. Yeah, we saw snippets of it behind a side story. I hate to say it, but Spike's story through this is a side story. It shouldn't have been the main focus. <laughs> We should have heard about it through background information, like Kurt Spock talking to Miss Harshwini in the background while Rainbow Dash was talking with the Wonder Bolt of, oh, that was a good race, or, you know, something like that. It shouldn't have been the main focus. And in my opinion, they could have done this better as a as two different episodes and done that whole point of view thing where they showed one episode which is all about the Equestria Games, totally focused on the first Equestria Games, the events, what's going on, the politics, just stuff like that. And you saw this little stuff in the background with Spike, and then you get a new another episode which is all about Spike like it is here. That would have been a much more satisfying thing. You wouldn't have felt so much that this feels like a filler episode. There's no point to it. Okay. <laughs> and it wouldn't just be focused on Spike. You could have had everyone who was not directly involved in the games show, you know, side stories, background stories. Uh, what was the name of the episode in Avatar, where we had Uncle and we basically followed his day, oh. on like the anniversary of his son's death? Oh yeah, um, it's I think it was actually one episode where we followed everyone on little stories throughout the day, and I can't remember. I think it was yeah, it was Tales of Ba Sing Se. Yeah, Tales of Ba Sing Se, something like that. So have you know the thread with Spike, have a thread with some pony else. Yeah, that might have even worked even better with this. So. <laughs> Yeah, so you could have had a dejected griffin, you could have had someone depressed from sustaining a sports injury and not being able to complete their event, you could have had someone who really wanted to go to the games but couldn't manage to get in. There's so much potential to make an episode out of side stories that would have all been more interesting than this. Yeah, especially since we got more views of other cultures around Equestria. The wide shot of the royalty box, I might want to call it, or the special import, the VIP box. I mean, we saw new ponies from other countries in there. There's at least four different ponies from different areas in the VIP box. Also, we get Blue Blood again. Hey, look, some guy who was mentioned in the first season. Nice to see you again. Also funny is the fact that Mayor Mayor is also in that box. Oh, I didn't see her. I was mainly looking at the two Saddle Arabian ponies and then the two ponies seated on the other side of Blue Blood. Ah, I should say, then there were six people from other countries, because there's actually two below them in the really wide shot that have different dresses from everyone else as well. And that would have been a nice thing to actually get some of the politics behind stuff, like Celestia and Luna talking with other emissaries from other countries. That would have been a nice, you know, expand on the universe some more. I don't know. <laughs> and speaking of the box still, I like how Twilight's like, yay! And Princess... Celestia just gives her a look, like, oh, yeah, impartial. I must be impartial. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, those are those are little moments that are really nice that make the episode tolerable. I don't hate it. I just think it was unneeded. And points of it were very painful, like Spike singing. Yes. I have actually haven't watched that part of the episode all the way through. Every time I hit it, I mean, I really tried to listen to it. I really did. But every time I watched the episode to get ready for this, I just fast forwarded through it. I, re I really tried once. I was like, I got to the beginning of it and I'm like, I can't stand this. Fast forward. I paused it about every five seconds, which is basically how I watched Games Ponies play last season. So, <laughs> no, and then Spike's whole thought of, I must be able to start fires with my mind. Somebody's been reading too many comic books. <laughs> yeah, that was an odd conclusion to jump to. It's like, this thing just burst into flames. Also, why was he thinking that it should catch on fire instead of thinking of, okay, calm down, you can breathe fire. It's a natural thing for you. You can breathe fire. That also brings up a question that's been going in my head. Is unicorn magic visible only to the audience? Because we always show these purple glows around or colored glows around everything, but I don't think anyone reacts to it. <laughs> I gotta double check because I don't think anyone ever mentions the color of magic either. I'm pretty sure that magic itself is just shown as a visual aid for the audience. And if that's the case, then that puppet show has just got a heck of a lot more interesting 
and tracking down that it was rarity that was causing all the trouble just got a lot more difficult. Mm hmm Well, that's a question for maybe a side video series about head cannons. <laughs> no, but doesn't Spike react to the color of rarity's horn in Imagination Manifestation? Maybe I would have to watch the episode again, but I can't think of it right now. Okay, and more importantly, in this episode, we see Rarity watching as the magic locking spell coalesces around her horn. Well, that spell is probably meant to be visible. Probably, but throwing it out there. And I did like that nice touch of, okay, we're banning all unicorn magic so that no one in the audience can help anyone in the game's cheat. Mm -hmm. Though it does bring up the problem of, okay, so earth ponies and pegasi are used to using their wings and hoofs to serve themselves food and drink, but then there's the problem of the fact that unicorns are probably used to using their magic to give themselves snack and drink. So how do they handle that? <laughs> That's probably why Pinkie Pie was the only one we saw with food. <laughs> I feel sorry for the audience members around her. <laughs> Quite. And also with the blocking of the unicorn magic, it's a nice way to keep the unicorns from being able to help when we get our little manufactured crisis at the end of the episode. Oh, and leading on to that point eventually is the whole magic disabling thing. I'm pretty sure the princesses, even though their magic's probably disabled, if some crisis came up, they would probably have an immediate off switch. I mean, they're Princess Celestia and Luna. <laughs> yeah, so at least the prime princesses should be able to get around that no problem because i mean they control the freaking day and night i mean if celestia's magic was truly disabled wouldn't the sun fall out of the sky uh, i think the sun is on a continuous course with a little shoving from celestia or there's a continuous spell that basically runs throughout the day and then at night and sunrise they both give a little shove to their respective solar bodies or in my head canon celestia just rotates the earth or whatever you call Equestria. <laughs> Equestria is a country, so it's not the planet. So. Yeah. And speaking of other scenes like that, giant ice cloud endangering everyone. Huh? This is definitely not needed. I mean, a bit much, don't you think? <laughs> well, we had to do something as soon as we had ice archery. My god, arrows that freeze what they touch. I mean, my first thought, as soon as Twilight and Spike came in at ground level instead of up in the stands was, Oh, Twilight's going to get hit by an ice arrow. I've watched Frozen way too much, which is to say I've seen it once. <laughs> and that's too much, but that's saying that you don't like the movie. <laughs> I enjoy it, but apparently once was enough to completely infiltrate my brain. <laughs> uh... Because I thought, Oh, one of the archers will miss with an ice arrow, it'll hit Twilight, Twilight will start to freeze, Spike will use his fire to free her, and he'll feel better about himself again. <laughs> but instead we get him melting a giant ice cloud and him going, meh, that was nothing. <laughs> and it doesn't even make sense for a single ice arrow to create that giant ice cloud. Should have been like a giant hailstone or like a never ending snowfall. Never ending snowfall would have been more dangerous in the long term, especially if the Pegasus ponies couldn't manage to cloud kick it into oblivion. That also brings to the point of why didn't the other why did the other Pegasus get out of the way when Spike only shut it at Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy? I'm thinking some of them would have went, What? Why are they? Because a lot of those Pegasus, you know, aren't crystal ponies. And speaking of crystal ponies, I paid attention to their design a lot, they're actually transparent. I mean, they actually walk in front of objects and I can see the objects through them. Yes, I have some old Gen 1 figurines like that. And I'm like, that's a nice touch, though what makes me question that spell? <laughs> Whatever spell that makes them shine like that, so could it be used to cloak ponies in the future? Or, because I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing their insides at all, so I'm guessing it's just warping, bending light around them. <laughs> And I'm thinking we probably don't want to explore it too deeply. It's just little things like that make me question some of the logic. I know it's a kid's show. Kind of like, so Spike can only breathe fire like this. And then suddenly in this episode we're like, wow, he can really breathe fire. I mean, like a normal dragon. It's not just a 
send messages. <laughs> well, we saw him melt the lock last episode. What I want to know is why was this time his fire fire colored as opposed to green? I'm pretty sure when he melted the lock in Imagination Manifestation, his fire was still green. If you look at it, his fire that he's actually breathing out in that shot is green, but the fire that's actually radiating out from the point turns red. So I'm guessing it's some type of reaction. Reaction to what? Ice's reaction to fire is to melt. Well, it does cool it down, and fire does change color based on its temperature, or how much oxygen is in it, I believe. Either way, it would change the color of the fire. Either make it more smoky so you can't really see the fire, because it's, you know, fizzing out, or you wouldn't see it at all. Or just steam. Eh, but getting technical, moving on. Yeah, and how did he manage to stay up there that long? Because he jumped off of the back of the last Pegasus he used to climb up there? My only answer is cartoon physics? As I raise my hands in the, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and why wasn't there more reaction from the Pegasi that he was using to springboard his way up there? I mean, a dragon just jumped on your back. I mean, a lot of this feels, I think the term is contrived. <laughs> Quite. You know, and then for Spike at the end to be like, oh, that wasn't anything. I think Cadence overdid it a little bit with her bowing and scraping. You're a princess girl, stand up. I think she did that because Twilight told her that Spike was feeling down, so Cadence, trying to be the nice princess she is, overdid it to try to get his um, ego back up. Probably, because there was a lot of warmth in her voice when she said it, as opposed to the deference that her body posture showed. But still, it's like, come on, girl. You're a princess. You're basically groveling to a baby dragon. And did I hear correctly that I was saying, save the Crystal Empire again? It was one ice cloud. At the most, it would have decimated the stadium, harming or killing everyone inside of it. The entire Crystal Empire could not possibly be present at the Equestria Games. So, no. Also, there was probably a lot of Pegasi there, a lot more than we were actually shown, that probably could have helped move that, or at least started kicking it into smaller pieces while the, while the athletes started running off the field, or they could have held it there, then let the athletes run off the field or evacuate, then started breaking into pieces. I mean... They probably could have held it long enough for the spell to be disabled, so Princess Luna and Celestia could have gone, Hey, go away. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or long enough for the stands to be evacuated. I mean, half the field cleared because half the field was Pegasi flying up to block the cloud. Ah, uh, unneeded plot points in an episode that feels unneeded. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. I want to know why anyone came up with ice archery. That seems very, very dangerous. I think it came from when Equestria at one point was actually maybe in a war sometime in the past. True. And it kind of just flowed over. Into a game, you know, filling up the target with ice, which makes sense. You know, one of my favorite archery games is a siege tactic. A another thing is the way those bows were kind of like, this isn't very practical for anything. <laughs> You can shoot, but you can't really move much, and you're always shooting at a slight up angle because of the way the whole contraption bends. Yeah, and it doesn't look like there's any way to move the bow up or down. So considering that the bow itself is mostly stationary, why was there even that much variance in where the arrows were going into the target? And here's another thing is, there were a lot more arrows shot than actually hit the targets. <laughs> If they're professional archers, even if you're having a bad day, a lot of those would still be hitting the targets. Well, I think part of the reason for that is because you're filling the target with ice. You're not always aiming for the bullseye like a traditional archer would. But that brings up the question of how on earth are you aiming when you can't change the angle of the bow, which is how you aim. Another, I don't know. <laughs> I know. Well, that one's from experience. I had the bruises to prove it. <laughs> uh, you and me both, though you have more experience with archery than I do. <laughs> yeah, I also have more bruises because it took me most of the semester to figure out how to hold my arm correctly so that the bowstring didn't hit me all the time. Uh, but there's a lot of questions there about just a lot of the background stuff that was going on around Spike where it was like, I'm more interested in the background. Can we have more of that, please? Please? For the love of God, please? Or, correction, for the love of Celestia, please! 
Let me some more background. Can I have that? It has less calories and more filling, okay? <laughs> My overall thoughts, if you haven't figured it out so far, is this episode wasn't needed. It's a filler episode where there should have been a story episode including the Equestria Games arc, where we actually got another Spike episode with no point. At least that's what it felt like to me, because the lesson was nice, but it was another one of those lessons where it's like, it doesn't fit here. Why is it even here? Why are we focused on this? It should be this other stuff that's more interesting. I'm pretty sure the kids would like that stuff more than this. You could fit that episode in as a background thing, and people would still get it. <laughs> well, that's my thoughts on it. We've had so much build-up to the Equestria games. We had Games Ponies Play, where... We actually got the Crystal Empire chosen. We had the episode with the Ponyville flag waving team. We had the key episode with Rainbow Dash where we had athletes training for the games. That's three episodes. We have four episodes leading up to the Equestria Games if you want to count the one where Spike is doing the pet setting and we have the different POV episode. With that much build up throughout the season, this feels like a lot of letdown. The Equestria Games, I've been looking forward to the Equestria Games. And instead we get Spike feels bad about himself because he had stage fright. Yeah, it's kind of a disappointment all around. I mean, if you took the Equestria Games out of that episode, I'd feel better about it. <laughs> but because you had it in an episode as the focus where the Equestria Games were happening, you're sitting there going, what? <laughs> Why? Oh well. <laughs> well, and next week we'll be sharing our thoughts on the season finale, which will be a two-parter, so expect a longer episode with that one. Thank you for listening. If you've enjoyed, please consider subscribing or leaving a friendly comment below. If you'd like to follow the progress of these episodes, and maybe hear some other audio snippets, you can check us out over on Tumblr. If you'd like to see high-res versions of Lux's artwork, you can check him out over on DeviantArt. Link's in the description. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 24, Equestria Games.